Why does it look like I'm ready to go to the North Pole? Hello, my greeting friends. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel and today I am here to be traumatized. Hello, welcome. Quite recently, if I say so myself, I've been seeing the surge of these types of videos where people have been swapping their screen time for reading time. I am certainly really guilty of doing nothing on my electronic devices rather than actually doing something productive. And today and for the next week, I am here to maybe potentially change that. Now I know a lot of people do this with their phones, typically. It's always the phone, let me get off TikTok, let me get off Twitter, let me get off Instagram, ah, social media. For me, that's not necessarily the issue. I don't have TikTok. I recently re-downloaded Twitter because I've had it off my phone for months now, and I rarely go on Instagram enough as it is. I personally say social media is not my issue. It's rather the fact that I'm a workaholic. So what better way to not be as much of a workaholic than making a video about not being a workaholic by leaving my computer that I will edit this video in by reading time. It's a great time. So if you couldn't already tell by the nervous laughter in the intro, my issue is not my phone or social media. It's my damn computer. It's the fact that I wake up and the first thing I open is my laptop and I instantly check emails and I work and I edit and I do something work related. And that is my issue. I admit it. But as of recently, I've just been wanting to find a better balance with my time. I want to have time to read and I want to have time for work and I want to have time to spend with my family and with my friends and just by myself if I want to be by my lonesome whatever I decide to do I kind of want to have a better balance at being able to do everything instead of giving up certain aspects of my life or certain hobbies just to do this one thing that coincidentally enough always happens in my computer and so I think the experiment it's pretty much self-explanatory I'll be running through my screen time I'll be seeing exactly what it looks like exactly what I've been been spending my time on for the past few months and seeing how I can cut back on that, replace that for reading time or just for leisure time, which is a concept for me, and seeing what happens at the end of the week. And before I get started with the video, I do need to give a massive shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. If you guys have been here for a while, you'd be no stranger to Ana Luisa and my deep love for them. You guys know I love jewelry, I love fashion, I love dressing up super simple and minimalist so that I can dress it up with my jewelry and Ana Luisa gives all of that to me and more. Because not only do they care about you and your pockets, but they also care about the planet that we live in. Their jewelry looks incredibly luxurious without having all of those luxury markups, so they do have pieces on their website starting from $39, which is incredibly affordable and allows you to start your own jewelry collection as I have started mine. A big topic at hand when discussing jewelry and fashion is obviously sustainability, and Ana Luisa as a brand is continuously taking steps towards being more and more sustainable as the days go by. Not only have they become 100% carbon and water neutral, but they have also managed to offset 100% of their carbon emissions from how they source their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces, which is pretty awesome. And they offered to send three new pieces my way. These are the ones that I chose this time around, and I love every single one of them. Starting off with this beautiful ring that I chose this time around, I wanted a bigger statement piece that I could wear, and it was like noticeable right off the bat, and this one is called Mara Onyx. And for the cuff this time around, I chose the twisted ear cuff. It is more simplistic, but it is again gold and it's got this twisted design that makes the ear look a little bit more dressed up. And then for the actual earrings that I am wearing, these are the Beauty Within hoops. They are a mini hoop with a dangly little flower. As always, if you guys want to check them out, I will be leaving my link at the top of the description, as well as my code for you to get 10% off. It is just Mellorites 10, so you can go ham on the website, start building your own collection, and start dressing yourself up with some jewelry while being able to dress with the hoodies, with the sweats, and again, dressing it up a little bit more with the jewelry pieces. So I'm gonna be starting out with my phone, even though my phone is not necessarily my concern, but there might be ways where we can even get better at the phone screen time. So for my weekly average, it is up to 11 hours and 46 minutes, of which the majority of the time is spent on YouTube. Then WhatsApp is a close second, Instagram is a close third, three hours and one minute. Also Safari, an hour
hour and seven minutes. I definitely could get better at YouTube watch time. And I will admit, most of that is just me watching live performances of Ariana Grande. And then for the tricky territory, it's my computer. And I know my screen time for my computer is going to be absolutely chaotically high. Yesterday, it was 11 hours and 55 minutes. Three and a half hours were Google Chrome, and that was three and a half hours of me uploading a video. So maybe that could be a lower time. Now we've got Discord, which is three hours. I know I can cut back a little bit of time on Discord so that I could do a little bit more reading. My patrons will be mad about that, but I think they can do without me for the sake of this video. So I guess those are my big three. It's Google Chrome, it's Discord, and it's Premiere Pro. So adding those up, it's an hour less of Google Chrome. Let's say an hour less of YouTube every day. That's two hours. Two hours less of editing. That's four hours. And then an hour of Discord. That's five hours that I could have in a day to read. I am also currently in the midst of Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. So it is the perfect time to be reading because the book is fucking incredible. I am loving every second of Middle Game. Let, let's, let's let future Mel take it away and she'll take some time off starting tomorrow. this feels so crazy. It's like I've never felt this good and this balanced in a single day. Not only does it feel so weird to be able to do all of these things in a timely manner, but to also feel so accomplished so early in the day, like it's 2 p.m. and I've already managed to edit a complete video. I have responded to a bunch of messages on Discord. I had breakfast, had a snack, have caught little breaks in between. I have read 30% of the other black girl and I read like 50 pages of middle game earlier. I'm going to quote Leonie here. You're telling me I can do all this and still have another how many hours ahead of me? Eight hours ahead of my day? Are you kidding me? I can be this productive every single day. What the fuck have I been doing with my time, people? I am honestly in awe and in shock right now, but let me update you on my reading. The Other Black Girl, I am really loving this book and its commentary. It's just everything that I was hoping for. Now, if you don't know what The Other Black Girl is about, I also talked about this in my TBR, but we basically follow Nella, who works in publishing, and she, at the start of the book, was the only black girl working at this publishing house until this other black girl, as the title says, arrives and is hired and starts her journey in this publishing house as well. And it has a lot of interesting and spot on commentary or so I'd guess about the publishing industry and how it's predominantly white and how the people who work in publishing are predominantly white and how they have obviously a completely different outlook on life and how they sometimes continuously go out of their way to not acknowledge the lack of of diversity and the lack of representation, not only in the works that they're publishing, but also in the people that work in these companies. And it had this really great line that I, I was cooking and I went, oh shit, that's actually pretty fucking spot on and just great. And it basically talked about how diversity at this point for publishing has kind of become this checkoff list where if you have a Latin book, it's kind of like, I, I'll put the check mark on that. And if you have a book by a black author, I will kind of put a check mark on that too. It's tokenism and tokenism is not diversity. And even there was this one scene that really pissed me off and it was the main character talking about how we need more diverse works and we need more POCs and how BIPOC or by POC, however you guys say it, is a word that truly represents diversity. It encompasses a lot of different cultures and backgrounds and all of these white people in the publishing house went, oh, but diversity for me means being this or being that and completely neglect and running over what Nella had said and how they slowly but surely stopped going to meetings where she was at or that she was establishing just because they didn't want to have these uncomfortable or so conversations about race and about racism and about diversity. I don't know how, again, accurate or not it is in the publishing industry, but just based on statistics that we've seen that have been published in magazines that have been brought forth by people in this community, we can tell that it's not diverse. We can tell 
tell that even though it has gotten better, it's literally gotten better by point something percent. It's not that big and it's constantly being masked as we're getting better and more diverse things are being published. But yes, they're getting published, but they're not getting the marketing money and you don't know that the works are being published or they don't get the best covers or they don't get the coverage that other books get because they are not being pushed out as they should be by the marketers themselves, by the publishing houses themselves. And so I think the book is doing a stellar job at establishing all of those conversations. There's also this, this little bit of like intrigue and mystery that is also being established because the book is a thriller. It is a mystery. So I can't wait to see where that goes. We'll see. I'm gonna keep on reading in a little bit. I think I'll definitely listen to some more of that today. It's a great time and it's really helping me get out of my slump, which is great. So we're gonna carry on with the day, see where the day takes me and I'll keep updating you all as I go. lovely sapiens hello <laughs> i don't know why i felt the need to say sapiens but we are we are unless we're not and we're aliens and i guess welcome to but i have a few updates for you guys it's the next day it is currently Friday, but I actually read a lot yesterday, which was so interesting to me because if I look at my screen time, it was still very high, but I think it's the way that I multitasked as I was in my computer that really helped me and allowed me to read more than I typically would. I got to 57% of the other black girl. At nighttime, right before going to bed, I did read another 50 pages of A Dune with Jaleesa. And then I didn't read any more of Middle Game yesterday, but this is the book that I'm taking with me to the coffee shop. So I am hopefully going to make some more progress on middle game. I actually listened to some of Where Dreams Descend by Danelle Angeles. This is the Le Fantasme pick for August. And I still haven't finished this book. The live show for this is actually tomorrow. So I really do need to finish this today. I don't think it's anything special at the moment. I think the book saving grace is the writing. The writing is beautiful. I wouldn't say that it's lyrical, though it's sometimes borderline lines on that. The magic system is nothing complex. It's very simple. It, it doesn't have a lot of intricacies and a lot even hasn't been explained. So it's just a very sort of vague, simple story. It's going to be an interesting live show because I just have been more confused with this book than I'd expect to be. I feel like there's been a lot of missed opportunities with the book that it's just, it's really sad. And I will say what I did struggle with a lot yesterday was I have this habit of when I'm reading an audiobook, instead of doing something else that's productive, I kind of just aimlessly scroll through Instagram and I constantly found myself like opening the app and I'm like, Mel, you, you, you're doing nothing right now. If you're doing this because you're bored and, and as we say in Spanish, is they also also like you you could be doing something else right now and so that's where my <clears throat> my word search book came in really handy because I love word searching so I have figured out that I love word searching while I listen to an audiobook and it's just great so I did do some of that yesterday as I was listening to where dreams descend so I'm sure I'll get to do some of that today as well I, I really do think we can get better by the end of the week and I find myself really wanting to get into some sort of work routine in particular so maybe by the end of the week, I'll have that sorted and figured out. And that's really exciting. and salutations. Hello. You want to say hi to the vlog? You want to say hi to the vlog, Gordy? 
Hi everybody. Hi everyone, good morning. It is <clears throat> 8.45 a.m. Hello, and Nala is here with me and apparently she wants to update you guys too. However, today is Sunday and it is, we're like, what, three days into our experiment. And I'd say that we're doing pretty great. And as you guys know, I've already finished Where Dreams Descend. Yesterday though, it was a trickier sort of day, right? So Saturdays and Sundays are days that I can't really escape how much time I spend online. That doesn't apply to every Saturday, but it does apply to every Sunday. Because Sunday I have to do the Bell Sprint, and so it's a little bit harder because it they usually start at 9 a.m. and I typically go up until like 3, 4 p.m. depending on the day, and then after that we watch a movie. It's a long day if I do say so myself, but I enjoy every second of it, but it is a day where I can't really escape like the online presence. What I can do though, which is what I did yesterday, because yesterday was kind of like a similar routine where in the morning I wasn't necessarily as online and then I had sprint at one with Liv and then we wrapped them up and then I had a movie and then at, right as the movie was over I closed my computer and kind of just chilled for the rest of the night but today that's what I'm gonna try and do like watch the movie and as soon as the movie is over like close the computer oh god there's a little fly going around close the computer and just kind of go on with my evening as I typically would and so that's that's the plan for today so I do have sprints I do have a movie and then after that hopefully it's just like chilling time time for me time to read but yesterday I also did manage to finish the other black girl I freaking love this book yes there there was a lot of realistic elements to this especially with the publishing industry and how the commentary about how many works that are being published are by POCs or not and how that number needs to be more balanced and how not only does that need to be balanced but it just needs to represent the way that the world looks now because the world isn't white right there is just so many flavors and colors out there the audiobook was also fantastic I highly recommend if you guys do want to read this book I did finish it it's anywhere between like a 4 and a 4.5 absolutely loved it knocked it out of the park today I'm going to be focusing on obviously Middle Game by Shannon McGuire and I'm also going to be starting the audiobook for Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I looked it up and actually script had the audiobook. I don't think my screen time got any better yesterday. I think yesterday was pretty bad because I was also on my phone a lot. But today, hopefully, I mean, I, I know it's already going to be bad. I look at my face. I love them. I love them so much. think this through because you guys are propped in a stack of books and the book that I just finished is the last book that's propping you and I can't be bothered to pull it out however I started and finished Clara and the Sun I was not planning on finishing this book today though I knew it was short and that I could finish this in like five hours I didn't think that I was gonna be so into it to the point where I would finish it today even though I was on my computer basically all day I will say I started and finished a book and that's as productive as it's gonna get. The audiobook was fantastic, first of all. If you guys are thinking of reading Clara and the Sun, I definitely recommend the audiobook. I think the premise of the book itself is just really, really interesting to me. I've always been really fascinated by, I guess, like science-y stuff, even though I would never go into that field, like, ever. But I've always been fascinated by, like, AIs and, like, the concept of, like, robots replacing human beings in some sort of productive way. And so I think that the book does a really fantastic job at talking about both of those things, about AIs being sort of companions to humans, first of all, kind of being like a, even like a pet for some people and for some others kind of, again, replacing what, what humans are able to do. And I, I think what, what truly makes the story so beautiful is obviously, I mean, Kazuo Ishiguro's writing, which is stellar. I definitely want to read more Kazuo Ishiguro in the future. The perfect vessel for this book was Clara. It was, it was narrating the story from the AI's point of view that not only made it incredibly 
original, but that also made it so much more deep. And granted, I will say the story could have gone deeper. I also will preface this by saying it was like a four star, but the story definitely could have been deeper. It also could have been more emotional. So which is why I obviously didn't give it five stars because I think there's some things that could have been tweaked. The last third of the book was not half as interesting as the rest of it was. The plot twist in the book to me was great. It really did it for me because I definitely didn't think that that's the route that the book was going to take. After the twist, there were just some things that I was just like, the commentary was there, but the rest of it was just not as interesting as I guess the beginning of the book was. I think the way that Clara looks at, at the world, she she looks at the world with such childlike innocence. And, and, and you can see that very, very clearly. She is very optimistic and she's very loving and she's very giving. And, and she truly likes to believe the best in people. She doesn't think that people can be mean or, or genuinely like atrocious human beings if we want to go there in, in such a big nasty word. She doesn't think that a lot of people are capable of having that, that evilness inside of them. And so she's constantly, I guess, I guess one of those characters that likes to give human beings the benefit of the doubt, that they can get better, that they can improve, that they can grow and change, which I think is honestly, first of all, a beautiful <laughs> outlook on the world. Something that while sometimes it might be realistic, sometimes it might not as well. I, I really like the way that Lara looked at the world and it was a really refreshing sort of POV. There was no cynicism. There, there was just, again, this childlike innocence that was so refreshing. It was exactly like you'd see the birth of a child and the child kind of learn the, the, the nuances of this world that we live in and try to understand human emotion in a way that is digestible in a way because human emotion is fucking complicated. Like even, even as adults, we, we can only comprehend half of it, if, if anything. And so I, I really liked that realistic outlook as well on her being confused by people's reactions and being like, but why are they sad if, if they if they are clearly meeting up and they're so happy? And, and again, there's so much nuance to this. And yeah, but humans don't just feel one thing at a time. You might be really happy to be reconnecting with somebody, but you could also be extremely sad at the fact that there was so much lost time in between that. And I, I think it was really beautiful written and I definitely want to kind of peep more of Kazuo Ishiguro's writing. Do I think the book could have done more? Yes. But when you look at those types of stories, I, I more so think about like a passive sort of storyline, something that's very linear. But I think even in those simplistic moments, if you look between the lines, again, there there's such a nuance to this conversation and there's such a, I guess, such a beauty to Clara as a character. And I loved every second of it. I didn't think that I was going to love it, especially by my attempt to read this before the audiobook. I think what I'm learning as I go through this experiment, it's like, it's not necessarily like me cutting back on screen time because sometimes it's impossible. Like there's days where I can completely do it. There's other days where it's literally inescapable. When it is inescapable, it's kind of just finding those openings of as to like what I am doing with my time. Like instead of going on social media, let me read. Or instead of watching this, let me read. I'm learning a lot about myself in this time and I'm learning that with certain things, I do not mind closing my computer computer at 6 p.m. and not looking at it again till the next day. And I think that's also a beautiful thing to discover as I do this. Good morning. I woke up not too long ago. I obviously showered, washed my hair, put on the same sweatshirt that I was wearing yesterday. And now I kind of need to pack up to go to my local coffee shop because I really want to go right now. I want to have breakfast there. Just have like a good old chill time by myself. And so I kind of need to pack this all up. I was only planning on taking one book with me, but then yesterday middle game got really good. So I'm going to take middle game and then I'm also going to take the final empire because I do really want to start it. And I have my little baggie here, which is what I've been taking with me every day that I go out. And yeah, let's go. Ah, it feels so nice to be outside, you guys. Good morning. 
morning everybody. How are we doing today? Hi. I realized just now that I never updated you guys when I came back home. There's also a construction going on outside if you can hear that, but again, I did read Middle Game. This is the book that I'm currently reading. It's like the bulk of my reading at the moment, though the final empire will become that very soon. I got to page 350 of Middle Game yesterday, so I guess I read 200 pages yesterday. I'm loving Middle Game, you guys. It's definitely one of those books that I just don't want it to end, but I also want to know what happens at the end, and it's also a book that I know I'm going to regret not having annotated it when the second book comes out next year. Everything about this book works. I think, first of all, it's very ambitious, and I'm sure for some people it'll play differently, right? Because it's so ambitious, and there's so much science-y terms going around, and some of it may or may not be realistic. I, I can just imagine the amount of research that went into this to make it sound half as realistic as it does, and so I know for some people, things like that don't work. For me, it's working. The whole quantum entanglement thing and the twins connected at birth, I just, this whole power thing and the whole mutant thing, I'm loving every second of it and I think even though the story itself is very repetitive, because it is, they constantly, it's a kind of like a time travel book, so they constantly reset timelines in order to not get it wrong. I will also never look at the phrase, we got it wrong the same ever again because I'm traumatized. They constantly reset the timeline and we kind of see the same things play out similarly to how they did in the past. It's the repetition of this book that makes you feel like they're doomed because you're constantly wondering how the hell are they gonna get out of this? There's just so much going on that I constantly wonder, are they gonna be able to do it? Like, are they gonna achieve the impossible city? Are they gonna, like the improbable road is so improbable that I'm scared for them. I'm scared that they're gonna die. I'm scared that something crazy is going to happen. But I, I just got to a part where I guess it's kind of like the catalyst for the big, big shit that's about to happen. I finally understood what the beginning is because the book starts with like five minutes too late, 30 seconds to the end of the world. But which is already a great start to a book. I just got chills. And the writing just complements it so well. Recently, I went to my aunt's house and this time around, we were more so talking about how human beings, because we use such little capacity of our brain, when human beings are born, kids, babies are born with potential abilities like telepathy or like telekinesis. And because those abilities are not developed as babies grow older and they reach adulthood, childhood, whatever it might have been, we as human beings completely lose the ability to do any of those. And so that's a theory that came up the latest that I went to her house. And it was so interesting because I feel like to an extent it would make sense <laughs> in a way. And I think this book plays a lot into that. It plays a lot into if childs are kind of bred, if we want to use that word, in very specific environments and situations and they are kind of all chemically put together are we able to unlock that potential that babies are born with and kind of exploit it in a way to reach godhood and every second of it is not only incredibly fascinating but it's also so fucking scary to think about to think about the fact that science holds so many answers to unknown things and this could potentially be one of them like it sounds real it looks real and though at times it's kind of confusing and it sounds crazy i believe it and i buy into it and that's also the scary part because i'm like you know i i be believing in everything i it's currently 9 45 a.m and i really do want to finish this today but yeah let us go read middle game get closer to the end and potentially finish this tonight i also forgot to say an update you guys i cried yesterday reading middle game i forgot to say that i got to a really sad part with Smita, if you know, you know. And I was sobbing my little eyes out and I didn't know, I also zoomed in on myself, ew. Um, I didn't know what to do with myself and I was sobbing and reading and I mean, honestly having a great time reading, but I was, it was so sad and I was not anticipating that. So just know that I have cried in this book and I'll probably cry again, which is great.
my god, you guys. Hello. <laughs> this is insane. I Good morning, first of all. It is morning time for me. I have yet to have breakfast, but it is 10.30 and I just finished filming something super exciting. I am not quite sure if you guys are going to be seeing this before or after. You guys will see it when the time is due, but it was so chaotic and fun and I'm so excited for you guys to see it when the time is due. And I'm sweating. That put me through a freaking workout. I also ended up falling asleep last night and I didn't end up reading Middle Game, so I definitely want to finish that today. As you guys know, it is also my brother's birthday today, so we are going out tonight to eat, so I don't know how much of tonight I'm gonna actually have as, like, time. So I am going to dedicate my day to, like, reading, potentially. And yeah, that's where we're at. I think my screen time yesterday wasn't that good. I really struggled yesterday, if I'm being honest. Like, the codependency really showed yesterday with how much I wanted to be on my phone and how much I actually wanted to scroll through social media. So it was definitely difficult, especially because I was really, really, really talking to friends yesterday. And I spent most of my day really texting. Well, not most of my day, but a lot of my free time texting. So that definitely took away a bulk of my time. So I honestly don't know if this experiment is gonna work out at the end for me and if the screen time has actually dropped, but we will try our best to make it drop. everybody how are we doing today let me bring over my phone because i need to double check what percentage i am in in the book that i'm currently reading uh let's open libby let's see okay so yesterday was a pretty good day we had a great time we went out for dinner i drank some prosecco ate some pizza we went to an italian restaurant which was 10 out of 10 and we then came back home and then we played some clue and yeah got my clothes through right now hello Anyways, I am currently reading The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Kornicek, which you guys know is our Lou Phantasma pick for Patreon. This book is interesting to me because I am somewhat familiar with Norse mythology. I'm currently 47% into this book. I'm enjoying it enough to keep on going, but I just don't know if the story so far, at least, maybe in the last 50%, it'll like surprise me and like be something completely different. The story's just not doing anything overly original in my opinion like it's very much sticking to the original mythos that we already know about Loki and his children and Angerboda and how they in the original mythos are mates and they were together obviously because I don't know the specifics I don't know if everything happened exactly as the book tells it so it kind of just feels like coloring inside the lines like you've got this parameter and kind of like this end goal so you kind of just pave the way for that ending because again, it seems like it's going where the mythos ends. And so I don't know if there's anything again particularly original or like overly interesting about this one. Though I guess it could potentially be interesting for the people who don't know anything about Norse mythology. And even then, if you don't know anything about Norse mythology, it might be odd to hear about somebody birthing a snake or a wolf or you know it's it, it's it's an odd one but again it very much sticks to what we know is true within the mythos the writing is also nothing truly special it almost in a way i guess the way that it's written kind of resembles a fairy tale-esque narrative things are not necessarily being shown to you like the atmosphere is not really set but it's much more about the actual events like angerboda meets loki and then they they fall in love and then they have their kids and then and then Loki does this and then Angerboda does that and then she doesn't remember that she's a witch and then Loki proceeds and does that and then enter Skadi and so you've got all of these elements and they are basically all kind of told to you in, in sort of like a I guess like a campfire sort of way. I feel like my 
my mom or like my grandma or my aunt it's like telling me a story essentially which i don't necessarily mind i think i think at least at the very least the writing style kind of resembles the way that these stories have been told for a long time so i don't mind it that much i just don't know if the story is doing anything particularly interesting for me to be like oh it's gonna be this rating. And my heart is kind of just falling into the sort of two star rating. I will say it's kind of interesting to see this dynamic and relationship and sort of power play, I guess, between Angerboda and Loki in this book and how they developed their friendship and kind of came to this place of, oh, I hate feelings and like feelings are horrible, but like I kind of am into you. And so I, I like that and I like the whole realistic element of Loki as a character. And beyond that, the relationship between Angerbola and Skadi is also something that's really interesting. I do plan to finish this book today because I have most of my day free. I do have a meeting at 3.30 and I don't know the length of the meeting, but it is outside of my home. But the rest of the day is pretty much free and I have, I think, three hours left of the audiobook. Yes, I have three hours left. So honestly, potentially could finish it before I even go out or get super close to the end and then finish when I come back home. Whichever of the two I know I'm definitely finishing that today, which is gonna be nice. I have been really good at not looking at my computer today unless I like really need to. And so I think as we near the end of this experiment is when I really get good at balancing kind of like my day and my screen time. But at the beginning, I think it was easy. The middle was really hard. The middle was like, oh, but I don't wanna read. I wanna watch a video right now. Or like, I wanna procrastinate. And so I, I think the, the beginning, because I, I had a lot of conviction, was easy enough. And then the middle, again, I really struggled. And now as we near the end, it's kind of tying back to the beginning of like, oh, now I realize how much I loved the beginning, how much I was frustrated at the middle, and how I want to go back to that place while still having a bit of the middle and kind of finding like a middle ground. You guys, how are we doing today? Hello! It is time for me to close out this experiment, this vlog, and see exactly what we came to. I think it was super interesting to have this experience because I not only discovered that I was more codependent with technology than I thought I was, yes, I was incredibly aware of my computer status and how I went on there more than I should every single day. I didn't, however, realize how much I also go on social media on my phone just to aimlessly scroll and get distracted. And it was so interesting to kind of see myself struggle throughout the week and seeing at what times exactly I wanted to reach for my phone or for my computer with no apparent reason. But before I do get started on that screen time, I do need to give you guys two more updates because first of all, I didn't even update you guys on the ending of middle game. So let me go do that real quick. Middle game. I finished this. I showed you the b-roll of the rating, but I never actually talked about how this book went at the end. It was a five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book and I really wish I had updated more as I went. It's just one of those books that for me personally, my experience, I was reading and I was so immersed and engrossed in the world that I didn't want to stop and I didn't want to pick up a camera and update. I think what Sean and Maguire did with this world was, again, not only incredibly ambitious, but she succeeded at everything that she had set out to do. I I am incredibly curious to see exactly what's gonna happen in the sequel, but I think the whole topic of godhood through alchemy and seeing this, this topic was really interesting to me because the way that she established this whole world was through these lessons, through these alchemical lessons about godhood and power and ascending through another novel, because this does have the trope of a book within a book, and it's called Over the Woodward Wall. And it was so interesting to see her delve into this topic of how certain books, depending on what you're reading and where you're browsing, and how analytically you go into them might have secret hidden messages to sort of indoctrinate and groom people of some sort. It was so interesting and not only did she kind of bring her own twist to that with that fictional novel that she put in here, but she also brought in elements of the Wizard of Oz and she tied that in here and it was so immersive and interesting and unlike anything that I've ever read before. And Roger and Dodger, I felt their pain and I felt their sadness and their happiness and their hope and their despair and not being able to get things right time and time again and really not knowing where they stood in time in the universe and why they were the sole targets of this whole thing. It was really beautiful to see them be their own completely separate individuals, but to also see how they were not complete without each other, how they, despite all of their differences and all of their struggles and all of the hurdles that they had to get past, they still loved each other so unconditionally. And I loved that message while the writing was 
the perfect conduit for this story in particular. I, when I started this book, I was so concerned because as I was reading, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Is this writing style going to complement the intellect of these characters? Not only do you have Roger, who is an absolute intellectual when it comes to words and literature, then you have Dodger, who is a super mathematical genius. And then you've got these alchemists on the other end who are also incredibly smart. And sometimes when you have these characters that in all of reality exceed your own intellect, it's always scary to kind of go into these works and see if the writing style that the author has adapted for this sort of story complements that. And it did that so perfectly with this. I was constantly in awe of Sean and Maguire's writing in this because it made everything seem so realistic and achievable when a lot of this was absolutely insane. I read this while listening to my classical playlist and it just enhanced the experience, just made everything flow so much better. So absolutely loved this. And then for The Witch's Heart, I did end up finishing this as well throughout this week. I realized that I only gave you like my 50% mark thoughts, never ended up giving you guys the final ending thoughts on this book. It ended up being a two star as my intuition told me it was, it was right. I honestly want to dig up a little bit more on the Norse mythology end of things to see exactly how much of this was accurate and verbatim what happens in the mythos versus where it deviated or where it had its nuances and did its own thing because I honestly can't differentiate the two in my head because I'm only somewhat familiar with the mythos. It stuck exactly to what it is and while I appreciate how true it stayed to it and how the writing style complemented the story very well, it did absolutely nothing for me. I genuinely believe that if I hadn't been listening to the audiobook, I would have given up on this book very, very quickly. So I've got my computer here with me and just let's look at some screen time analytics. I am honestly really scared <laughs> to see where we ended up. So looking at the week where I started this experiment, I realized that starting this experiment on a Thursday might have not been the best idea, but I think there are some blatant differences. So if I look from August 29th to September 4th, which is the week before the experiment, the daily average usage of my computer was 14 hours and 24 minutes. If I look at the week after that one, which was the week that I started started the experiment, it was down 29% than the previous week. So instead of being 14 hours, I dropped it to 10 hours and 15 minutes. And then if I flash forward to the last week is where I'm actually really proud, you guys. I managed to downgrade my screen time by two times. So instead of it being 14 hours, I managed to drop it to seven hours and 38 minutes, which is fucking incredible. Not only did I learn that I could edit videos faster if I timed myself and caught breaks in between, I also truly learned how much realistically I can read in a day without pushing myself overboard and how much free time I actually have and should have every single day. Last week was probably one of the best weeks that I've had in such a long time. I read so much. I literally read how many books? Six, seven books. And then I went out with friends several times, had makeup meetings, had FaceTimes, had Zooms, had meetings of all sorts, did sprints, got up with friends, did my own thing, spent time with my family, went out with my family, and even in the midst of all of that, I was still on my phone and on my computer, and I genuinely thought I was on there for a lot more than I actually was, and had time for everything. I felt so productive, balanced, and healthy, like you guys have no idea. Now on my phone, if we look at August 29th, to September 5th, the same way we did my computer, my screen time was six hours and 47 minutes. All things considered is pretty good. Then if I look at the week that the experiment started in, it went up to 10 hours and 19 minutes. But if we see the graph, Thursday, Friday, Saturday were significantly lower than Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which again, I'm really proud of. If I look at Sunday, and if I look at Monday, they are on average 15 hours, like pretty much the same. Tuesday was nine hours, and then Wednesday it elevated to 11. But then if we go to Thursday, it was five. If we go to Friday, it was seven. Saturday, it was eight. Still significantly lower than 15. I'll absolutely take that. And then if we go to last week, it dropped. It dropped two more hours. So we went from six to 10 to regulating it again to eight, which again is super good. I do have to say 
say I don't like how high this is looking while I still did all of those things again I managed to be productive in every single aspect of my life which previously I was still being productive but the bulk of my time was really going into procrastination so honestly you guys I am super proud of myself I was constantly questioning if it was getting better or if it was actually getting worse but it seems that everything has regulated I'm actually looking forward to keeping on with this routine things that I learned about myself I love listening to audiobooks as I cook my meal whether it's breakfast lunch or dinner as I eat love listening to an audiobook as I work as I schedule things love listening to an audiobook I love physically reading right as I wake up setting aside an hour or two before I even look at my phone before I look at my computer and also reading at night right before going to bed I found that it makes me really sleepy to the point where I haven't really needed to look for podcasts or videos to listen to as I go to bed so a lot of things that I've learned about myself this week and a lot of balance that I've found which I again I'm really proud of and I am glad that I executed this video and that it actually worked for me because if not that would have been catastrophic but I'm glad that it worked out but yes you guys that is it for today I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you reach the very end let's leave some computer emojis down below and comment down below if you've read any of the books that I've read this past week what did you think of them if they have been on your radar what have you been reading for the past week also let me know all of that and also if you struggle with any of this and need some sort of reassurance or if you want to give me some sort of reassurance go off in the comments I know that I am certainly not alone in this journey of trying to let loose of that and actually be more productive because I know this has just taken over the world by now but yes don't forget to subscribe down below if you're new and haven't done so yet if you want to join the family and if you enjoy this video and once more I upload two to three times a week and it's a fun time over here and if you want to support the channel further I do have a patreon we call ourselves the citadel and there is also a bunch of exciting stuff happening over there so if you do want to join us the link for that is always in my description as well as all of the links to my social media you guys know where to find me again thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video don't forget that you can check them out over at the top of my description and you can use my code melreads10 to get 10% off your order I love you guys so so much and I shall see you on the next one bye guys mm -hmm.